So Nancy Pelosi <laughs> went on CBS, and oh, and uh, the gentleman interviewing her, uh, which his name escapes me because he works in mainstream news media, uh, he asked some pretty good questions, uh, these same things I'm saying, and let's watch how Nancy uh, responded. What do you tell Democrats who want a new direction? And, and then go to you, what are you gonna do differently? Well, I don't think that people want a new direction. Our values unify us, and our values are... Our, uh, pe pe people don't want a new direction. People like losing. <laughs> people, we're Democrats. We're really cool with it. What fact, are your values? We I get paid know. either way. Our donors give us money. We win, we lose. It doesn't matter. If we lose, we get a job with a consulting firm. We go into lobbying a lobbyist or whatever. It's a, it's a big money trade. I don't think you guys understand how this works. People don't want a new thing. What do they want? They want us. What did they want? She wants our core message, value. What did she say? About supporting America's working families. That is one that everyone is in agreement on. Let's, let's, let's play it. Let's take it from the top because I, I don't know what she's trying to say. House. What do you tell Democrats who want a new direction? And, and then go to you. What are you going to do differently? Well, I don't think that people want a new direction. Our values unify us, and our values are about supporting America's working families. That is one that everyone is in agreement on. You Really, you support the America's working values by, you know, NAFTA, TPP, no, she didn't stand up for $15 minimum wage, letting uh, Occupy Wall Street get their heads cracked from coast to coast. Is that how the Democrats stand up for working values? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, you just keep saying that bullshit platitude. That fucking means nothing. Yeah, I could have nothing. A Republican could have just as easily have said everything. Everything she just, she said. just said could have been said by a Republican. It's nothing. Uh oh. Does Means that nothing what you just said. And you wonder why you lost 69 seats? This is an inspiring leader? This is a fucking loser corporate money grabber. That's all this is. This is a loser. This is a leader? She's not a leader. You know why she's the leader? Because she gives them money. What we want is a better connection of our message uh, to, uh, to working families in our country. And that oh, it's the connection. <laughs> If oh, there's a failure of a connection, it is your fault. It is your fault. Exactly. It's your fault. The con if there's no connection between your message and the people you're trying to reach with your message, that's the messenger's fault. Yeah. Right? 100%. And we've talked about this on this show. The, the part of the job of a politician is to communicate with their constituency to explain to them what they're planning on doing to listen to what the constituency needs and have a vision and have a vision and so if there is a disconnect it is 100 percent her fault you mean there's no policy that proves that they're actually supporting the middle class yeah what let's let's look let's hear, look let's hear what she says clearly in the in the election showed that that message wasn't coming through Oh, the message that you're for workers wasn't coming through. You mean when you're, you mean when when your nominee was the person who pushed NAFTA while exploding the prison population at the same time they gutted welfare and repealed the New Deal banking regulations, which crashed our economy, which workers had to bail out with austerity. You mean that message? Pick is a it, side. Which they, message if... is getting through? Which me, what what the message that you? The message got through. The Democrats turned their back on workers. That's the fucking message. And instead of saying, wow, message received, we screwed up, and we got in bed with Wall Street, which is diametrically opposed to workers, we got it now. We're getting back in bed with unions, and we're sticking up for fam. That's not what she's saying. She's saying we're doing exactly the same thing. It was just our communication was wrong. We need to communicate what we're doing better. Uh, we are united in terms of the security of our country, which is our first responsibility. We're, we're united in uh, our first responsibility is the safety of our country. That's the, that's your first responsibility is the say again. Sounds just like a Republican. Yeah, I, I don't. That sounds just like would, a Republican. Why would anybody even say that? Like, I mean, what? look, national uh, security of the country is pretty much. A nonpartisan, nonpartisan issue. Nonpartisan issue. How you do it is a partisan issue. Right, right. But, but like saying like <laughs> we're really into keeping this country safe is like it's all platitudes. It, no, no, no. It, my it actually, dog is into keeping the the country. Everybody's into keeping the country safe. It's a, you didn't say anything about what you do. You notice that was the first thing she said? That's a con man tactic. What she's trying to do is say the word safety or security to make you feel slightly afraid, to make you think of something that was scary, which causes you to have less rational thinking. 
from then on. So the next thing she says is easier to, to land in you. So she's going to follow this up with even more bullshit. That's why she starts with safety first, because it makes you afraid, and that makes you dumb. And that's why Republicans start with safety yes, first. Yes, And that's what she's doing. They're, I'm telling you, Democrats have so morphed into the Republicans, they don't even realize it. They don't even realize it. that they. Okay, here we go. To be smart and oh, wait. strong. Okay, I want to back this up. I want to back this up, because what she says... Because what she says right here, what we're talking about, is that she's literally, the first thing is to be straw, uh, national security, that's what Republicans say, and then she literally quotes Donald Trump. <gasps> what? Listen, listen to this, watch this. But uh, we are united in terms of the security of our country, which is our first responsibility, mm -hmm. to be smart and strong. Is that not what <laughs> Trump says? We gotta be smart but strong. Gotta be tough but smart. That's exactly what Trump says. So she takes a right-wing talking point that's been a right-wing talking point forever, and then she she takes Donnie Tinyhan's uh, quote, literally his quote, and puts it at the bottom of, of, right at the end of her Republican talking point, of we gotta have national security first, safety, strong, and then we gotta be smart and strong. That's exactly what Donnie Tinyhan, so I wonder how you guys lost, because you have no, you're not different, Steph. Well, you know, I'd, maybe they didn't lose. Maybe this is exactly what they wanted. Here we go. I, I, but go Robert? Nancy Pelosi should be the president of Oberlin College, yes. not the House Minority Leader. How, who's going to vote for Democrats? That's the face of the Democrats. And I'm not talking about physicality. I'm talking about her leadership ability. She's got, she can't, she couldn't, I wouldn't trust her to lead my dog down the driveway. I, she can't lead. Who's going to be inspired to do anything she says? You she know has what? zero vision, nothing. And you know why? Because her vision is get money from Wall Street and buy commercials and that's how you win. Not you talk to the people and you have policies that actually change people's lives for the better. And you stand up against the powerful in America and you stand up against the corporations and you stand up against the duopoly that has taken over our politics. But she's not doing that. She is the duopoly. She is Wall Street. She is the the one percent. She's the one percent. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even ascribe to her any what you're ascribing to her in the sense that what you're ascribing to her has actually has some vision. Uh <laughs> what I would say is she has become just a mishmash of mediocrity. And Agreed. Uh, I, I wouldn't even say that her her motivations are even present. I think she just doesn't even what know what even she's doing? doing anymore. She's just going through the motions because she has an inertia. Well, I guess like I was she, leader. I'll yeah. always be leader. I if don't... she if she had the vision of I'm going to get money from Wall Street, she would be more focused in this conversation. <laughs> you know, it, it's almost like her message is still not connecting. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. I didn't I didn't feel connected to this message. It's true. Not reckless in how we protect the American people, uh, strong in how we uh, protect our economy. Here's, here's my question, though. Democrats, since 2008, the numbers are ghastly for Democrats. And Senate Democrats are down 10 percent, in the House down 19.3, and in governors, 35 percent. The Democrats are getting clobbered at every level over multiple elections. That seems like a real crisis well, for the party. you're forgetting that we, we were up 50, you know, we went up so high uh, in 2006 and 2008. And oh, we were doing so good. There's no place to go but down. Come on. <laughs> come on. I mean, come on. You mean the country connected with the, the Democrats' message and you blew it? Yeah. And you blew it by not legislating to the message? Is that what you mean? And then the, and then the country realized that you guys were all full of shit because you didn't do anything for them? You gave them a Republican health care plan? You didn't re-regulate Wall Street and jobs keep flying out of the country and the income disparity keeps growing? And what do you say? Uh, let me just put, the, put that in perspective. Uh, when President Clinton was elected, the Republicans came in big in the next election. When President Bush was president, we came in big in the next ele in the subsequent election. When President Obama became president, the Republicans came in big in the next election. I guess my question is: the the, Demo the Republicans reacted to so what she's oh! so what she's saying is pay no attention. 
It's this just, is just this how is just it works. the way it works. This is just the way it works. There's nothing that I did wrong. There's nothing wrong. The Democrats shouldn't be in the majority because it doesn't matter what your message is. It's just a matter of cycles. So it doesn't really matter what we say or what we do or what kind of legislation a party has or a focus or a message or anything. It, that None of that matters. It's just the way the cycles go. So it doesn't really even matter what I do or say. Then you should say something good. Then say something you else. You should do something. If it doesn't matter, then do something. I agree. You know what's uh, noticeable here? No policy. Zero policy. No ideas. No vision. No nothing. Not even, she can't, not, not only do they not have a vision, she can't even see what's happening right in front of her. She doesn't even know what's happening right now. Their losses with a big revolution and a change. They have a very new president at the top of their party now. You have somebody like Agricultural Secretary uh, Tom Vilsack saying that the Democratic Party is like a tree that, quote, looks healthy on the outside, <laughs> but is in the throes of a slow and long term demise. Well, I have enormous respect for the secretary, but I'm more optimistic about the strength of the Democratic Party. Even though nothing gives you hope, there's no reason to have optimism. You have absolutely no, you've been getting wiped out election after election after election. You have no plans on how to fix that. You have no plans on how to connect with working people because you don't have a fucking message for them. Hillary Clinton's message was TPP and open borders. That was her message. That was her dream, by the way, that the WikiLeaks revealed that she said to bankers that her dream is an open borders hemisphere. That was her dream. And what I would say, because you talked about these numbers, uh, of some reasons uh, to be hopeful, uh, because it's necessary, because this is about policy. It's not about politics. It's about politics uh, it, for some. Mm -hmm. But for us, it's about protecting Medicare, Social Security, good paying jobs for America's workers, protecting a woman's right to choose issues that unify us. But let me just say this. In a time that a president... So, so she says, let me just say this. So here comes her big, mm, right? She's ready. She's going to, here's my message, and here's what I'm going to tell the people of America. Here it comes, and here, and you're, everybody's afraid of Trump. Well, I'm the new leader. I'm the leader in the House, and I lead the people's... Uh, 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 I lead the people's delegates. I'm in for the people. I'm lead... Here's what I got to say to those people. So the, the change in president from one party to the next... The states receive an infusion of talent. Mm -hmm. President Obama going out of office, sadly not having President Clinton come in. But those Democrats will go back, run for governor, run for Congress, state legislatures, and the rest, and we will build okay. up uh, the numbers that you're talking about there. All right, we're going to have to have to leave it there, Leader Pelosi. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, they... oh. She said we're better off now that we're weak. So you'll see a lot of people running and winning. She, not not on a new message. And by the not, way, but, she knows would, for a fact that's not true. Most people who leave uh, leave the executive branch stay in D.C. and go to work for law firms and lobbying firms mm -hmm. and defense contractors. What she's saying is patently false. <laughs> And by the way, as a leader of the Democratic Party, what she should be articulating is, is this is our new strategy to win state houses. This is this is where we need to start winning because the, the entire country is gerrymandered beyond all recognition. And the only way to fix that is by winning state houses. She fucking knows it. She's not doing a goddamn thing about it. This 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 woman seems surprised by everything that has happened. Everything that's and her. Oh and no no, it's all everything's the same, right? Okay. Her her <laughs> solution to new problems is old fixes. She's she, I mean she's like I'm counting on the unions from 1975 to help bolster our country. You know, the ones who we've been throwing under the bus, and by, that's why there's no fucking unions left in America. You know, the yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna rely on them and then we'll get our message to them. Your message is that you've been crushing unions. That's your message. Your message in Wisconsin, when the teachers were getting their unions taken away, their mere message was moot, no message. Stop staring at your feet while your friend's head is getting cracked. Like do something, like, if 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 you keep do that off enough, guess what? Your friends aren't going to trust you. They're not going to be okay with this. You remember when the highest overpaid intern, Russert, Luke Russert, asked her when she's going to make room for the younger people? Yes. Yep. There's the time. It is now because you know what? Luke Russert was right. By he the way. was.
Russert 2020. Russert 2020. <laughs>